Thanks, Goff, and uh, hello, great to be with you, albeit online, and uh, at least we have it better than the Apostle Paul, who was in prison at the time he wrote this letter we're going to be looking at right now. All he could do was write letters, he didn't have the internet, if you can imagine such a time. Well, we have it uh, a little bit better than him, and yet, but even, even he, in this isolation that he was experiencing, in this prison cell, he wrote about the joy of partnering together in the gospel with the church at Philippi. And in our current preaching series called Joy on the Journey, we're reading through uh, the letter Paul wrote to the church in uh, Philippi. So I'm going to read from that, chapter 1, starting at verse 3, reading through to 11. This is what Paul writes. He says, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all, because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent, and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. So wonderful opening to his letter there. And we're going to ask three questions really as we look at it. We're going to ask, what is partnership in the gospel? We're going to ask, what's so good about partnership in the gospel? And we're going to ask, how can we partner together in the gospel? So first, what exactly is partnership in the gospel? Well, let's take the word partnership first of all. Ben Cohen and Jerry Greenfield met in a high school gym class. They were, in their own words, nerdy, uncool kids, not exactly in the mainstream of social activity. And being the least two able athletes in their class, they gravitated together and became close friends. After leaving high school in a succession of dead-end jobs, they decided that their best shot at success was to set up business together. Since they'd always uh, shared a love of food, they took a $5 correspondence course in ice cream technology, aced the exam, and the rest, as they say, is history. I don't know if you've ever tasted uh, the ice cream. Now, Ben and Jerry actually went on to battle the corporate giant that was the Pillsbury Doughboy to become an ice cream superpower in their own right. Different people partnering together to create something more than the sum of their parts. And the Christians at Philippi were partnering together with Paul. Actually, this word it might be translated differently in your, in your version. It's sometimes translated fellowship. And it speaks of a deeper, closer relationship and working together than even uh, uh, Ben and Jerry's uh, partnering uh, together. This is a, a deep spiritual fellowship, a spiritual partnering, a linking together of hearts and lives for a common purpose. They were joined with him. These, uh, the, 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 the Christians in Philippi joined with Paul together, uniting their resources towards a common purpose purpose, the greatest purpose, the grandest goal, the sharing of the gospel. So let's think a little bit about what the gospel is. What is the gospel? Well, in one sense, it, uh, that you, you need the whole Bible to, to shed light and to reveal just every, the wonderful different aspects of the gospel. But uh, let me put it like this. We were made, our representation of God became warped. But because of God's love, because God so loved us, he sent his son Jesus to live in our place, to die in our place, and to be raised again to life, 
to bring us back into relationship with God, this relationship that we were made for. And even more than that, he, he gave us, the, he brought us into his relationship with God as our heavenly Father. And he made it possible for us to be transformed once again into the image of God that we would again display God's glory in the earth. We were brought back into relationship and it was made possible that we could once again uh, represent God on the earth. And the, the wonderful thing, the key thing, how does this happen? How does this, how do we get this relationship back with God? How, how is the image of God renewed in us? How do we once again represent God more faithfully? Well, the wonderful news of the gospel, the good news of the gospel, that it's not by working hard enough, by trying hard enough to reach a certain standard, but it's by believing in Jesus. It's by turning back to God and believing in Jesus, trusting that his death, his life, his resurrection can count for us, and we can come back into this wonderful relationship with God as our heavenly Father. This is the gospel. And uh, so I hope that gives you a flavor for what partnership is and what the gospel is. Our next question, hopefully in the light of what I've just said, might sound a little silly, but uh, uh, just to ask it anyway, what is so good about partnership in the gospel? What is so good about partnership in the gospel? Sharing the gospel, of sharing the gospel in a world that is, uh, it has a different way of thinking, God's wisdom, the, this message of the gospel is opposed to the way of the world, the way that people normally naturally think as hearts turn away from God. The world is strongly opposed to this message. As, uh, these messengers, as, as we bring the gospel, in fact, the Bible, uh, as the Bible begins to show that there was hostility as they brought this wonderful message. People's hearts were pointing in the other direction, and some even died. Some of these messengers of the gospel, these early messengers, died. And still today, there's huge challenge and opposition as we share this wonderful message of the gospel. And if, if, as if that wasn't enough, this gospel is for the whole world, that every tongue and tribe and people group should hear this message. This is a huge task to communicate the good news of Jesus Christ to the world. It was going to take time and energy and money and resources and creativity and strategy to explain and express in every culture and language this glorious message that in Jesus, we can come back to God. We can find forgiveness. We can come back into relationship with God. And the image of God in us can be restored. And we can, in fact, live with God forever and cover the earth with his glory as we display what he is like, as we live with him and for him. This wonderful news needs to get out to all people groups, everyone, everywhere. And Paul was a gifted guy. As you read his letters, you say, wow, he was a, he was a clever guy. He was an enthusiastic guy. Uh, he was a great leader, but he couldn't do it on his own. He needed others. He needed others to partner together with him. He, it wasn't just strength in numbers. It's strength in differences. God equips different ones of us in different ways to work together towards this grand goal, the sharing of the gospel. Apart from their love of food and lack of athletic ability, Ben and Jerry were very different people. Ben admired Jerry's warm, caring, personal style with employees, and Jerry valued Ben's creative, risk-taking drive for improvement. And it was interesting to me, actually, that Ben, he lacked a sense of smell and taste, and indeed it was that that led to their trademark chunks in their ice cream. There is power in our gaps as well as our gifts. Two friends joined together in a common goal to achieve something that neither could do on their own. That's the power of partnership. And so Paul rejoiced to partner with the Philippians to get the gospel out to the whole world. Their differences fused together in this one glorious purpose. So that's the first thing. Practically, it's necessary that we partner together in the gospel. But the second thing, Paul rejoiced in their partnership, was because partnership is enjoyable, because people 
It's good to be with people, people. Uh, uh, with, where he, he enjoyed the relationships he had with the Philippians. Listen, listen to the way he speaks. He says, I hold you in my heart. In verse 7. He says, I yearn for you with all the affection of Christ Jesus, just as Jesus loves these, uh, these believers, loves these people in Philippi. So something of that has been downloaded into Paul, and he loves them. He yearns to, to be with them. He, uh, it's great joy and affection that he has for them. And so there's an enjoyment of partnering together in the gospel in that sense. It's good to be with others. Paul enjoyed some rich relationships in his partnership with the gospel. They were of such great joy to him. And especially, I suspect, when he wasn't so able to be with them, as he was in this situation, perhaps in prison, isolated, he prized all the more these relationships that he had with the church at Philippi. It was a love thing. It was relationships that he prized. These, that, this, this was what made it enjoyable for him to partner together in the gospel with these, uh, these fellow believers. But there's a third reason that, uh, that Paul rejoiced. Their partnership in the gospel was essential. It was essential. And by that, I'm tr- I want to try and communicate the fact that partnership is at the essence. It's the essence of the gospel. It's at the heart of the gospel. It's the result of the gospel. In fact, it becomes a sounding box for the gospel. At the heart of the gospel is a restoring of relationship. First, our relationship with God, but then our relationship with one another. It brings us together, different people, different backgrounds, different ethnicities, different cultures, different experiences, different ways of looking at the world. But in the gospel in Christ, we're united together as one. The gospel brings us together. The gospel is about a restoration of relationship, and the result of that is the church The church, the people of God, united together. The church, therefore, becomes a living embodiment of the gospel, a manifestation of the message. You can describe to someone, or you can try what water is like, and you could talk about it being clear, and you could talk about, I guess, the molecules, if you are sort of scientifically inclined. But you're never going to get anywhere near what it's like for someone to dive into a lake or to, to drink a glass of water. The experience kind of is, is so important in understanding what water is like. And so it is with the gospel. We, we, of course, we communicate the gospel through words, and God uses that to open hearts to respond to the message. But it, what's true of many people is it's hearing the gospel and then seeing it in action, and then experiencing God's love to them, perhaps through other through friends, through, through Christians, through in the community of people who have been changed or in the process of being transformed by the gospel. They can swim, as it were, in the gospel. They can taste the gospel in the people of God. Of course, imperfectly, but it's such an important way that the gospel is communicated and applied to lives. The, the, the church is the best way that the gospel is communicated in this world. And I'm not just talking about a conversion, that the penny drops and and someone becomes a follower of Jesus. I'm talking ongoing from that. The best way the gospel is applied to all of our lives, each one of us, is in the context of a gospel community, swimming in this wonderful, glorious community that's being transformed and changed by the gospel, that we would see in each other's lives different aspects of the gospel, that we'd have new insight into God's love for us and God's plans for the world and for his people. And so Paul could not simply communicate the gospel effectively without the church. He needed the church there in Philippi. The the church was the means by which Paul communicated the gospel to that city. They were an essential partner in the gospel with him. And so he rejoiced, though he was in prison in Philippi. The thought that there was a church planted in Philippi filled him with such joy. This, is, this was what was needed to communicate the gospel. And of course, he planted churches wherever he was. The church is the means by which the gospel can be communicated to the world, to every tongue and tribe and people group. So that's why he, uh, he rejoiced that they were partnering together 
in the gospel. And now, kind of finally, I want to come and think about how we can partner together in the gospel. It's a good question to ask, particularly right now, as things are looking a little different. We're having to be a bit more creative about, about how, we, how we do this. So let's ask this question, how can we partner together in the gospel? And three things I just want to highlight for us. And the first is that our partnership is in the gospel. And the gospel is about Jesus. And so I want to encourage us in our passion for Jesus. I want to encourage us to, to, to lift up Jesus together, to focus on Jesus together, to lift him up amongst us, us and delight in him. Our partnership is in the gospel. We are in the gospel. We are, we are partakers of God's grace in the gospel. So let's lift up Jesus and rejoice ourselves in sins forgiven in Jesus. Let's rejoice in God's love for us in Jesus. Let's rejoice in the eternal life that is ours in Christ Jesus. We are not just messengers of grace, but we are first and foremost partakers of grace ourselves. It's a common passion for Jesus that fuses us together into this powerful composite. If it's true for a passion for ice cream, I guess, that, that joined a Ben and Jerry together, how much more should a passion for Jesus join us together in our partnership in the gospel? How much more in the spiritual realm is this true in the church? In the church, a common passion for Jesus through a sharing of the one spirit unites God's people together in proclaiming the gospel. Ice cream companies, they, they come and they go, but of the increase of God's kingdom, there will be no end. And the Bible says, God says in his word, that the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this, a zeal to see his glory in the person of Jesus. And this zeal lives in us by the Spirit. It's a zeal for Jesus, a passion for Jesus that causes us to, to partner together to make him known. I was just reminded of uh, what John Piper said uh, this morning as I thought about, about this a bit more. John Piper puts it like this. He says, God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. So let's be satisfied in the person of Jesus. And then it's actually something else he says. And this, this is the heart of it. He says, the gospel, our mission, is to bring the nations into the white, hot enjoyment of God. And I tell you, it helps if we are enjoying the grace of God to us in the person of Jesus, that we have a passion and a zeal for him in our own lives. So let's lift up Jesus amongst us. Let's, uh, let's um, put some worship music on when you're home alone. Let's mute our mics and sing out when we are together on Zoom. Let's gaze on Jesus through his word as we're doing right now together. Let's follow along on King's Dailies on our YouTube channel as we, we focus on Jesus, as we turn each page of the Bible and see Jesus. And our passion increases as we see what he is like and what he's done, the revelation of God to us, of Jesus through his word. Let's talk about Jesus and our passion for Jesus in, in our life groups, in our discussions on Zooms. I know some running partners find uh, apps like YouVersion helpful where you can follow along in a scripture and just kind of chat together and talk about Jesus and share our passion with one another. Let's fuel our passion for Jesus. True partnership in the gospel, true fellowship starts and ends actually with worship. Hearts joined together in, co in a common love and delight in the person and work of Jesus. A deeper Worship results in a deeper fellowship, which results in a more effective witness and sharing of the gospel. So that's the first thing. Let's, let's focus on Jesus and enjoy Jesus together. The second thing is, let's build strong friendships in the body of Christ, in the church, with one another, where we can't partner together at arm's length. Paul writes in, uh, he says, that he prays for them, actually, that their love may abound more and more. That's their love for one another. He says, this is just love one another as Jesus has loved you. This is how we're to love one another. And God, God has already encouraged us just to be looking out for opportunities through this time uh, to just to bless one another, to connect with one another, to support and help one another. Let's love one another. See, we are family first. 
We are family first. Before we're co-workers, before we're doers together, we're family. Our togetherness is not based on our ability, what we can do for one another. Our togetherness is based on the fact that we are born again by the Spirit into the same family, sharing the same Spirit, sharing the same uh, Father, uh, God as our Heavenly Father. We're brothers and sisters. So especially at this time, let's look for ways to express that love to one another and do life together. And finally, let's work together. All that I've said so far in terms of our passion for Jesus and our love for one another, that's, I think of it like, you know when um, you mix fuel, if I remember from my chemistry, you mix fuel and you mix oxygen. That gives a potent mix. But then what you need in the combustion chamber is a spark. And you can think of like two Actually, someone gave me a while back, you can get these kind of uh, things that you strike together and they produce sparks. I attempted to bring it in, but uh, just got to be careful. But I want you to think of just, just two flints and you strike them together in this potent mix of fuel and oxygen. Well, in our working together, together, it, it, it takes, it take, you can't do it on your own. We need one with another, striking together, working together for the gospel in this potent mix of passion for Jesus and love for one another. It releases the power of God in our communities, in our cities, in our nation. Let's, let's work together. So the key question for us is, how can I join with others in this glorious task of sharing the gospel? And I just wanted to just suggest a few phrases to keep it simple. And just let's see if the Spirit quickens perhaps one or two of these to you and makes them specific in your particular circumstance. How can we join with others in the task of sharing the gospel? And the first thing that we can do is we can cheer each other on. We can see what others are already doing, and we can encourage them in it. We can say, well done. Just, I just love to see God work through you in that way. It's great what you're doing. It's great the way you're stepping out. It's great the way you're sharing your faith. Let's cheer each other on. The next thing we could do is we can help each other out. We can see what, what others are doing, and we can say, I could, could I come alongside? Could I help? Could I get involved in that? whether it's an individual or a team, see what we're already doing together, what others are already doing, and step in to serve. Let's offer our help. Let's help out in what others are already doing. Maybe we might want to invite in others to come alongside us and to join with what we are doing. Maybe uh, introduce them to a friend. Maybe uh, come, we, need, we need some more help on our team. Come and be part of our team, whatever, whatever that may be. Let's invite other people in to join us as we share the gospel, as we serve in various ways in the context of church life together. And the next thing really is kind of related to that. Let's make space Let's make space. Let's not try and do everything ourselves. That's a danger sign. If we are trying to cover all bases and, and be everything and, and do the whole thing ourselves, we, that's impossible. That's not how it works. That's the spark cannot be created like that. We need to make space. And, and in fact, you might even if you think you can do it better, make space for someone else to come alongside and be part of your sharing of the gospel, of your serving and building the church. Let's make space. Let's raise others up. Let's not try and do it all ourselves. It doesn't work like that. And the next one, let's share dreams. This is a powerful one. As God puts things on our heart, as we have ideas, let's talk about them with one another. As God speaks to us, let's share that with one another. As dreams are shared, that's a wonderfully fruitful context to work together. A serving together comes out of shared dreams. So let's hear God together. Share our dreams together, things that God has put on our hearts. And finally, let's pray for. Let's pray for one another, just as Paul prays for the church in Philippi. Let's pray for one another. And of course, 24-7 prayer coming up, that week of prayer that we have, a wonderful opportunity to pray for one another and to be together, to, to act together in the sharing of the gospel, in this partner, partnering together in the gospel but at all times, in all kinds of ways, in all situations, let's pray for one another. It's a wonderful way that we can all partner together, even at distance. Let's find out what's going on. Let's ask different ones, how can I pray for you as you share the gospel? 
Actually, Jean reminded me recently of a phrase we used to hear quite a bit in uh, New Frontiers, family of churches. Some might remember it. We can do more together than we can apart. We can do more together than we can apart. This is what God spoke to us as a movement many years ago. And that's true. So let's, let's do more together. Let's find creative ways of doing more together. Let's connect with one another, even through this time of separation. It might be just writing a note. It might be just picking up the phone. It might be kind of, and we can get tired of Zoom, but it might be just pressing in together as a life group again, just connecting on Zoom, being together, praying for one another, serving together in the various ways that we can do. The, uh, Kevin and the band would like to just come back. We're going to continue in worship in just a moment. But let me just um, uh, talk about, uh, just mention another partnership. See, in contrast to Ben and Jerry, Larry Page and Sergey Brin did not start off the best of friends. They saw things very differently. They regularly butted, to he- butted heads together, but bonded over a common love for data mining. After working together on a research paper called Anatomy of a Large-Scale Hypertextual Web Search Engine, they launched Google with a mission to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible to all. We, the church, are united together by a passion for something far more glorious than data mining a passion for the Lord Jesus. And our mission is far grander too, to make this good news of God's lavish grace to us in Jesus, universally known and accessible to all. In the words of Jesus, to go into all the world, baptizing people in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for Jesus, that in him we have been brought close, close to you and close with one another. Especially at this time, we have come to appreciate church families so, so much. We love one another. We give thanks for one another at this time and are partnering together in the gospel. I want to pray now for many powerful, spirit-filled, as it were, Ben and Jerry partnerships amongst us, different ones coming together in the power of the Spirit to partner together in the gospel. Like Paul with the Philippians, different ones of us in life groups and running partners in alpha groups, wherever it might be in our teams. Lord, would you fill us full of your Spirit? Would you bond us together in the gospel, in this partnership? to reach out together with this gloriously good news. Even in our physical separation, may there be a spiritual togetherness that is both wonderfully enjoyable and world-changingly fruitful. We pray this in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen.